Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, today uh, we're going to be working on a little four jaw chug. This is a recent acquisition of mine. Uh, I actually picked it up from a viewer. This was sent in to me by Chuck Kavsenik, who lives up in uh, southern Michigan. And uh, we did a little bit of horse trading. Uh, he, he, was, uh, he asked me if I could use this. He knew that, that it was the size that would fit my Revet lathe. It's a little eight inch Cushman chuck uh, with the uh, L0 backplate on it, which is exactly what I need for my, my lathe over here. This is a nice high quality four jaw chuck. And uh, he had it, didn't have a machine for it to fit. And uh, he was actually looking for uh, some measuring tools and uh, I had some spare stuff there. So anyway, we did some beneficial trading. He got some stuff he needed. I got some stuff I needed. Everybody's a winner. Uh, but what I want to do today with this is the chuck is actually in pretty good shape, but I want to take it apart, clean it really well, and just get it ready so that when I do need it the first time, it's just absolutely ready to go. So I'll tell you what, let's zoom in here. We're going to take this thing apart. Uh, inspect it really good. It's got a little bit of surface rust on it. Nothing bad at all. In fact, I wouldn't really probably be opposed to just throwing this on the lathe and using it, but uh, we're going to clean it up. Uh, we'll let it soak in evapo rust, clean it up really well, uh, re-lubricate everything and get it back to going. So let's get in here and do it. So let you guys take a little quick peek at what we're dealing with here. Again, this is uh, made by Cushman. Cushman was a very high quality, high end uh, manufacturer of uh, chucks. I'm not sure if they're still in business or not. Uh, they very well may be, uh, but anyway, good quality stuff. This is a uh, got the built-in back plate on it. So this isn't one where you change the back plate. This was made with the uh, L0 back plate on it. And uh, anyway, we're gonna take it apart and clean it. Now, with it being a four jaw chuck, it's really pretty simple. Uh, of course, you've got four independent jaws on here. I had this chuck key that fits. It says not, he, it didn't come with one, but this one is one that fits it just fine. So each individual jaw is independent and um, you can of course adjust each one of them. Uh, one thing I note that coming out of there, it was a little bit stiff. Not too bad, uh, probably just cleaning and lubrication and that'll help. It looks like it's in good shape. Uh, I don't really see any significant wear or anything like that in here. So let's go ahead and take all these out. That one there's coming out very easily. That first one was a little bit stiff. I'm just looking for wear in here in the teeth. I'm looking for wear down here in the teeth on the, the screw. And uh, again, everything looks good. See the original grind marks, got a little bit of rust pitting in there, but again, nothing bad at all. That may come out in the evapo rust. May not be pitted, just kind of looks like it was. This one comes out very easily. Teeth look good. That looks good. Let's take the last one out. And this one, I mean, it's coming out fine. I'm able to do it with one finger, but it is, again, a little bit stiffer than the other ones. Uh, but no big deal at all. And again, everything looks good. I'm not gonna worry about trying to take these out. Um, I think you can unscrew them from the bottom somehow, but it's just, it's just not worth it. I think what I will do is I'm gonna take this over to my parts washer and uh, just give it a good scrubbing in there and that will hopefully get any uh, grease and lube or whatever that's in here out. Then we'll go let it sit in the evaporust tank for a couple of hours and that should help clean off any, uh, any rust or anything that's in here. And then we'll reluber and put her back together. Basically, if you haven't seen this, this is just a uh, parts washer. So this has got basically mineral spirits. It runs to a pump. I just cleaned this thing out not long ago and put fresh solvent in here. So this thing is in pretty clean shape right now. A lot cleaner than it normally is for me. It had really built up with gunk after about 
three years of being of using it. But I'm just run this over it. This uh, mineral spirit should dissolve any oil and grease that's down in here. Just letting it run in there. And between that and I'm just kind of hitting it lightly with a uh, wire brush here. Get on the bottom side. It's in pretty good shape, all things considered. So um, it came pretty clean. So uh, it's, it's not too bad at all. We'll just scrub it up and uh, I'll do these jaws too. Some people are probably going to say, I need to be wearing gloves. And yeah, you're probably right, but I never do. I'm not too worried about having those palm olive hands. And I'm sure mineral spirits is probably known to the state of California to cause cancer and birth defects and who knows what else. Just like everything else. But I'm not too worried about that either. Fortunately, I live in Georgia, not California, so I'm safe. All right, guys, I think that uh, that's in good shape. I get a rag and wipe this down and we'll go let her soak in some evapo rust. So I'm sure the guys who are regular to my channel have seen my evapo rust tank before. Uh, evapo rust is a product, it's a liquid product that you can soak stuff in and it just eats rust away. And I built a rather large tank here to soak big machine parts in. But when I have smaller parts, I just took a five gallon bucket here. I drilled a bunch of holes in it where the liquid and stuff will come out of it real easily. And I just dropped my parts down this bucket and basically gives me a, confines my stuff to a smaller area where I can fish it out of the tank a lot easier. And we'll just let it drop down in there and let it soak and um, we'll be back. I'm gonna probably let it soak about four or five hours this afternoon. No more rust is on there. That'll probably be plenty adequate and uh, hopefully it'll clean it up real nice. This uh, evapo rust is real safe. I don't have to worry about it getting on my hands or anything like that. So we're just gonna go off and let this uh, cook in the stew for a while. Been soaking in here about four hours. So pull this up, let that Papa rust drain out of my holes in the bottom of my bucket. And I'm gonna let it kind of sit here and just drip for a second or two, but that looks a lot cleaner. What I'll do next is take this over to the sink, just rinse it out real good, rinse it off real good, get all that evapor rust off and hit it with a little bit of steel wool or, or uh, Scotch-Brite to just kind of clean things up a little bit. And we'll go put it back together. over here at the rivet now and I'm going to go ahead and just put the chuck body on the lathe. Haven't put the jaws back in yet. All right. Okay. And I want to just uh, Turn it on and you noticed uh, some water slung out of there. That's one of the things I wanted to do here was get any moisture out of there. So I'm gonna basically just turn this thing up to the max. That's not the max, but I'm gonna let it just sit there and run a few minutes. That's centrifugal force. Should throw any water to send that chuck out. Now we're running up about maximum RPM. All right, that should have the moisture out of it. Next thing I want to do is I just want to kind of polish it up a little bit. So I've got some uh, Scotch Brite here. And uh, I'm just going to come in here and go over it a little bit. That 
just kind of brightens it up a little bit. And I think we're about ready to put our jaws in now. I've got a little bit of Teflon grease and I just want to put a little bit of grease on these uh, areas in here where the parts are sliding. I'm really not trying to cake it on there, but you know, I want to have a little bit of something in there for some lubrication. When it comes to grease on these truck chucks, you know, I like to have a little bit, but I don't want to overdo it because uh, if you get too much in there, the metal shavings and so forth will actually stick to those, uh, that grease and just collect stuff in there, which can cause it to wear. But a little bit is important. All right, and I'm also just gonna put a little dab on the screws. Now, unlike a uh, three jaw chuck, these are not numbered, so it really doesn't matter which one. They actually are numbered, but there's not a corresponding number on the chuck, um, at least that I've been able to find. So we're just gonna put them in. It really doesn't matter that much. And uh, I did take these over to the uh, grinder with the scotch bright wheel and I just kind of polished them a little bit got all the made sure we got all the rust and everything off of them okay These jaws on this four jaw chuck are reversible too. So if you want to grip something from the outside, a larger diameter piece, you just unscrew them, turn them around and put them in there and, and they grip in both directions. So that is uh, it. We've got our Cushman chuck all nicely freshened up and she is ready to go. Well, there you go, guys, a uh, real quick, easy project. This is actually something that uh, you need to do periodically to chucks just to keep them clean, keep them good in order. Uh, they get trash in them, they get metal chips in them, uh, they get rusty over time. Uh, it's, it's a good idea probably once a year or so just to take your chucks off the machine, go through them, clean them, relube them, put them back on, and uh, it just keeps things working better. So anyway, that's the process for a four jaw chuck. I've done some previous videos showing three jaw chucks, but uh, the four jaws are actually a little bit easier, at least most of the time. And um, keep, them, keep them in good shape, keep them running. And we're glad to have this one for this, uh, my nice little 10 inch rivet here. This is gonna come in handy. I'm sure it'll get used a lot. And with that, that's a wrap guys. Uh, as always, thanks for watching. Leave comments if you like, and please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Catch you on the next video.